Hello everybody, Laurel Ann Stark here. It is January 30th today. It's uh, about 20 after four and today is Bell Let's Talk Day, the day to reduce stigma and start talking about mental illness here in Canada. And it's just a really great way to um, raise money for mental health initiatives Canada-wide and start talking about something that is uh, not something that you can necessarily see that could be wrong with um, anyone that you know. So. I'm just doing this live video here today is to just talk a little bit about um, the mental health awareness and entrepreneurship as well as a little bit of like what I've experienced and what I've learned in my journey as an entrepreneur for the last 16 years around mental health stuff. So first and foremost, the reason that I'm broadcasting here is to help to reduce the stigma and just let you all know that I, although I haven't been diagnosed with anything, I self-identify as having mental health struggles and I'm directly affected by mental illness, absolutely. Um, one of the ways that that's manifested for me has been with struggling with um, substance misuse disorder. So I am a woman in long-term recovery, which means that I have been sober from all mind-altering um, substances since 2011 and that was one of the things that I had to learn about because I used alcohol to cope with stress and a lot of other things and that was something that was definitely negatively affecting my mental health as well as something that I believe um, is classified as a mental health issue so Bell Let's Talk is really handy in that it donates five cents every time we use a frame and we use the hashtag and share the video and all those types of things and I think it's really great that we talk about it one day per year but I think we also need to talk about it basically every single other day so what are some things that we can do um, to sort of help each other out and reduce the negative impacts of mental health challenges here in Canada and abroad so number one just knowing about what kind of statistics like how common it is so according to Bell anyways and lots of other studies that mental health affects one in four people globally so out of every four people you know one of them is struggling with mental health issues now as it comes when it comes to entrepreneurs and self-employed people that number actually triples to three out of four people are directly affected by mental illness so if you know anybody who's self-employed um, they have a much greater um, gr yeah, it's much more likely that they're suffering from mental health stuff. And that was uh, discovered by Dr. Michael Freeman in a study called Touched by Fire. So you can go and research all that. So just knowing that it's like super, super common. And um, one of the ways that we can deal with that is if you are self-employed or you are an entrepreneur, just knowing that uh, for the most part, it's you're genetically predisposed to have a higher um, rate of being affected by uh, mental illness and just taking steps to be aware of that and also to sort of manage any ways that that might pop up. And there's also the, there's the genetic and then there's the environmental component of things. So if you have a genetic predisposition, you certainly want to make sure you're not exacerbating the situation through environmental um, factors as well. So just talking about um, what you can do if you are self-employed to take better mental health of mental health care of yourself and if you know someone who's self-employed what you can do to help keep them safe as well so looking at some of the more famous entrepreneurs that have had challenges uh, you know and not just challenges but have like legit killed themselves so I mean Kate Spade was a huge surprise to all of us like she had it all it looked like and yet she felt like she can go on with life the founder of reddit killed himself entrepreneurs and suicide are definitely related um, it's the high stress of the job it's the uncertainty often long working hours um, financial stress etc so along with the genetic predisposition to be more directly affected by mental illness and most commonly according to dr. Michael Freeman anyways is uh, hypomania so that is four more days of feeling very energized not necessarily needing very much sleep having lots of ideas um, feeling very optimistic etc which can sometimes cause high-risk behavior like gambling and other like non-protected sex or over shopping things like that um, and then four more days of really low energy feeling super low depressed um, that sort of fraud syndrome where you're like oh am I gonna get you know found out or whatever imposter syndrome that's what it's called so four more days of down four more days of up that is what hypomania kind of looks like and it's very very common in, in entrepreneurs so looking at that and sort of knowing that that's a really normal thing to have happen and to just make sure that you're not making it worse through the way that you're sort of treating yourself and your time and all those things so some of the stuff is like pretty obvious but I know that it's helped me quite a lot in my own just managing my own mental health because I definitely have noticed that I do have the hypomania thing and most people don't notice the up part but they'll notice the down and the down is just like 
you just kind of want to, you don't want to leave your bed, right? Like just, it's really, really, you're really depressed, really sad. You feel like you're a loser and a failure and nothing's going to go right. And like, you might as well just like throw in the towel and go get a job, right? Like go get a job serving or at McDonald's or something like that. Um, so in those moments, it's really helpful to just kind of, you know, get up, go have a shower, make sure you're eating some food, drink some water, um, make sure you're getting enough sleep. And I know, again, this stuff is really, really common sense, but sometimes we forget, especially if we're super busy, as self-employed people usually are, they say you can choose your own hours, right? You can work the first 12 of the day or the second 12 of the day. <laughs> and so if you're working hours like that, it's really important to make sure that you're getting enough sleep, um, watching your smartphone usage, especially just before you go to bed, the light coming off the smartphone will actually keep your brain awake. So just keeping your devices out of your bedroom and away from your eyeballs for at least an hour before you go to bed. Um, those are just some, some small tweaks that you can make to your sort of everyday routine just to kind of keep your mental health in check. Watching, you know, high fat, high sugary foods, making sure that you're getting lots of complex carbohydrates, vegetables, fruits, those types of things. Um, also avoiding isolation. So I'm broadcasting live here from a weird location. It's the um, boardroom B at Quality Foods in View Royal and they have a fantastic community situation where you can book boardrooms. And so every Wednesday, not every single Wednesday, but the majority of Wednesdays, I'm hosting a co-working for women here in this boardroom. And the reason that I'm doing that is because isolation is a really common side effect of being self-employed or working from home. And it can just make you really, really depressed if you're working by yourself all the time, because as humans, we need social contact. So making sure that you're avoiding being isolated all the time, that you're getting out, you're talking to people, that you have at least a couple of people that you can talk to if you are feeling out of sorts or sad and knowing that there's no shame in it either. Like if you're not doing well, it's okay. Like not everybody's doing well all the time. It's a total myth to be like happy all the time. It's not how humans are. I think it was Buddha that said to be human is to suffer, right? So knowing that you've got a couple of people that you can talk to and tell the truth to and reach out to when you're feeling rough. And then conversely for anybody who knows a self-employed person, like. I really feel like the onus shouldn't be on the self-employed person or the person with mental illness to have to be the one to reach out. It's kind of like victim blaming. So, you know, check in with the people that you love, ask them how they're doing. And if they're telling you that they're struggling, you don't necessarily need to fix it, but it's about listening to them and empathizing and saying like, I'm sorry that you're having a hard time. And like, you know, can I help you in any way? And like, yeah, that sounds really rough. Just like listening and empathizing and reflecting is, is a super, a valuable way to support the people in your life and it's a great way to empathize um, with them and just it's really healing to be able to just tell people what's going on and then they're not trying to fix you right so checking in with the people that you love on a regular basis making sure that they are okay um, and also you know just like watching um, alcohol and drug usage because that can definitely kind of mess with your head a little bit if you're taking any medication making sure that you're taking it as prescribed and you have a doctor that you can work with that is helping you make sure that you're, you know, keeping any side effects um, at bay, or at least they're being, you're being monitored by a medical professional. So those are some things that um, are just like pretty basic things about being able to take care of your mental health. Other things are more around, like it's kind of like more advanced. It's like learning how to self-soothe and how to take really good care of yourself if you're not feeling well. So uh, the people I work with, I usually, uh, we work together to figure out a list of I call them immunity boosters or your self-care list and it's just things that you can do for yourself to pick yourself up when you're in a funk um, I find like that's not necessarily something that's taught in school and so it's a really great tool to have it's just a list of things that you know will make you feel better and feel like you're taking good care of yourself if you're feeling low those types of things and then like watching how much you're working to moving your body all of these things but yeah I just wanted to kind of jump on here and share like a little bit about what I've learned about making sure that my mental health is good because I definitely struggled for a long time um, and I hit burnout as a self-employed person. I struggled with alcohol dependency as a self-employed person. Um, definitely lots and lots of struggles in that department. So you're not alone if you have struggled or if you are struggling, um, please don't hesitate to message me. Like seriously, no judgment, like feel free to send me a message. I'm absolutely here. Um, in the links below this video, I will also post a list of all the phone numbers and resources that you can get in Canada for free if you have are having a mental health problem. If you are uh, planning or thinking about suicide, please do tell someone and ask for help. Um, we definitely want you here. Um, you belong, you're loved, you're important. So please stay, reach out for help. Um, you know, whatever help it is that you need, like it's there. And um, please don't do anything rash. And just know that everybody has rough days and it's not, 
It doesn't make you a bad person, doesn't make you weak, anything like that. We live in a really challenging society and a really challenging culture and it can be really difficult to cope with uh, a lot of the things, especially like looking at the news and those types of things. So just wanted to, to share that on Bell Let's Talk Day and like I think we should talk about this every day, not just uh, like one day, you know, once a year in January. So. Um, please do feel free to comment or if you have any questions or anything like that, I'm happy to address them. Um, if you want to share this video, absolutely go ahead. The whole point is to reduce the stigma and get us talking about this all the time and like taking better care of not just our self-employed people, but everyone that we know as well. So I'll post those resources below. Um, again, if you need anything, definitely reach out. I'm absolutely here for you folks. And if you're self-employed, definitely take good care of yourself. Take extra good care of yourself because you're in a higher risk um, situation and it's it's important to know that um, I don't think we talk about that enough so I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday and we'll see you on the interwebs bye